Drake May nearly pulled off the magic in Music City on Sunday, but it wasn't enough to propel the Pats over the Titans. Stick around. You're about to be locked in the Locked On Patriots podcast. You are Locked On Patriots, your daily New England Patriots podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all of you Foxborough faithful and thank you once again for making Locked On Patriots a daily part of your New England Patriots coverage and also your first listen each and every day. I'm your host Mike DeBate. I cover your New England Patriots for the Patriots country. Reach out to me. Let me know what's on your mind on X at M-D-A-B-A-T-E-N-F-L. While you're out there showing some love to Locked On Patriots, social media style that is, please follow our account there as well at L-O underscore Patriots. And, of course, Pats fans, the New England Patriots dropping an overtime thriller to the Tennessee Titans at Nissan Stadium on Sunday by a final of 20-17. to Very few bright spots for the Patriots. There were a couple. We will get into those. And, of course, there were a number of doldrums to which the Patriots fell on Sunday afternoon. Breaking it all down with me here, as some of you may see on YouTube from an indisclosed location today, (laughs) (laughs) meaning that my good friend is having some camera issues. I do definitely appreciate his willingness to continue to press on and be a true warrior and join me here on the airwaves. And that is my good friend, the legend himself, the Count of Murphy Fisto, Thomas Murphy, thank you for coming to me in friendship. Even though we can't see you, we feel your presence and your aura today here. Don Murphy. Thank you, man. Thank you. It's too bad. I'm having a great hair day. <laughs> All right, fans, nobody is more upset than I am that we have to waste Murph's good ah, hair day. But man. bottom line, it was not a good day for the New England Patriots no. yesterday in Music City in Nashville as the Patriots fall to the Tennessee Titans. For 11.82 seconds, Murph, Patriots fans held their breath. And lo and behold, all of the angst, all of the uncertainty, all of the heartache the Patriots fans have been feeling lately really turned the corner when Drake May was able to find Ramondre Stevenson for a miracle touchdown that would send the Patriots into overtime. Of course, Joey Sly extra point actually did that. But bottom line, that six sent the Patriots into overtime. And I think a lot of Pats fans were looking at that and saying, wow, it's been a long time since yeah. we've had a quarterback that could make a play out of nothing at all. And believe me, it really was. It was like creating something out of smoke and mirrors. Drake May able to find Ramai Stevenson. But alas, a 25-yard field goal from our old friend and business partner, Nick Folk, dooms the Patriots to a 20-17 to loss. Drake had a great moment to end regulation, but he had a bad moment to end the game. After the game, he would say it was a dumb decision. I can't argue with that. Um, It was a rookie moment. He's going to have some of those. It was not the best of times for Drake May. It wasn't necessarily the best move that he could make. Heaving a ball to the deep part of the field and, of course, intercepted by Titan safety Amani Hooker. That ended the game, and Patriots fall to 2-7 and on the season. Now, Murph, on Friday... You joined me here on these very airwaves, and we talked about the monster keys that that needed to be turned in order for the Patriots to make this a game that they could come out on top. Yep. The Patriots did not turn many of the monster keys on Sunday. Alas, they did not win. Before we get into the offensive keys that were not turned, that should have been, that could have made life easier on Drake May, How would you evaluate the youngster's performance, especially given that he's only hours removed from being cleared from concussion protocol? Well, I think he was he was pretty um, pretty damn good. Uh, It it wasn't a a total disaster, but you know, considering the fact that he had no run game to lean on, he Mm -hmm. couldn't get into play action whatsoever, and uh, he was the leading rusher once again. That's three times in his four starts. You know that he's been the leaning rusher on this team, and um, it, it, it's 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 aggravating. It is. It's aggravating. Um, one of the keys that that weren't turned, and and you can put this right on Drake, is um, is win the turnover battle. Mm. You know, I said last week the uh, the Pats would need to be a plus two in this department. Uh, Drake threw two interceptions. The first one was you know egregious. Mm -hmm. Uh, although I put some of that on play calling and once again, spacing, Mm -hmm. 
All right. Because, you know, Hunter Henry and Jalen Polk were almost right on top of one another. You can't drag that many defenders into an area and keep expecting success. But then again, Drake might have been baited just a little bit there and and just thrown a bad pick. That's a rookie. That, they, it could have just been uh, a rookie move. And, and that's going to happen, you know. But at the end of the day, you know, what this man is able to do with his arm, because he did complete a few really nice passes on Sunday, um, you know, what he's able to do with his arm, uh, what he's able to do with his legs, as we saw, you know, the entire game, you know, rushing for 95 yards and also what he was able to do at the end in extending that play, even though the the Titans were only rushing three and able to find Ramondre mm-hmm. as broke for, uh, you know, he kept moving and, and found an open spot and Drake found him. Yeah, and I give the, the kid a solid uh, C+. Plus. Yeah, I think that's pretty accurate. I would probably give him a B, and I would say that the only reason why I'd give him a B is because I believe that the play around him yesterday was egregious, like you said, and I think that there were moments where he was able to turn water into wine because yeah. of that. But at the same time, yeah, there were moments where he did lo- indeed look like a rookie, and we've said this several times here on these airwaves. Mm-hmm. Um, losing the fumble while trying to step up in the pocket, 648 yep. remaining in a 10-10 game. When you're an NFL quarterback, when you're a pro-level quarterback and your team is relying on you to protect the football in a tie game in a situation that's starting to get very tight and very tense, you need to do a better job of protecting it there. There's no question about it. Drake would be the first to admit that. Yeah, no, a lot of people keep comparing Drake May to uh, Josh Allen up there in in Mm. Buffalo, and and that's a Josh Allen mistake right there. Yeah, You know, holding a football (laughs) like a loaf of bread essentially costing your team an opportunity to really continue that drive. But at the same time, you're also looking at it and saying, okay, well, the kid rushed for 95 yards when the team as a whole rushed for 110. Yeah, that includes the 95 folks. So you're taking a look at now 16 yards for Ramondre Stevenson and a minus one from Antonio Gibson, whose usage, Murph, continues to baffle me. I'm not really sure what Alex Van Pelt is doing there. This kid is supposed to be a solid compliment to Ramondre. I'm not seeing it. That running game clearly had its issues yesterday. And once again, you know, your receiving core, with the exception of Hunter Henry, Kendrick Bourne, and Ramondre Stevenson, kind of... Yeah, non-existent. Not a- Mario had a aesthetically pleasing one arm catch. This kid can really make plays when you need him to. Jalen but... Polk had had more penalties than he had targets yesterday. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, the the Pats running game, the the running backs averaged one point three yards per one point three five yards per carry. Mm. If you take out the quarterback. Okay, they we're talking about the running backs. The Titans were 4.3, and and then then we're getting into the bad here. Um, once again, the Patriots could not um, run the football, and they could not um, uh, stop the run, mm-hmm. especially yeah, in couldn't. overtime. A lot of that is because of subpar play along the lines, and we're going to discuss the offensive line and the defensive line, not only not turning the monster keys, but also not able to rise to the challenge of being a professional level line that could provide both protection and pressure. And two things that I think the Patriots could have used a lot of yesterday, maybe if they had more of it, they would have come out on the winning side. We're going to get to that in just a moment. So stick around. You're not going to want to go anywhere here on this episode of Locked On Patriots, but Murph, before we take our leave of this subject, obviously all eyes are going to continue to be on Drake May. Um, Those of you that are viewing this on YouTube see Drake makes magic, and obviously there was a lot of magic about the way that final play ended up. It's been argued by several, including me, the defense, Vincent LaGuardia Gambini, that (laughs) these moves are the moves that are going to galvanize Drake May's identity in this league. Is this a defining moment for Drake May, or are we still a little bit too early in the kid's career to start saying, okay, yeah, that's the moment he became what we all believe he can be? It's a moment. I I don't know if it's a defining moment, but it's a moment. It's a moment that um, that, uh, free agents around the uh, the country this offseason are going to look at and say, yeah, the Patriots got a winner here. Mm. They got something right. You know, um, Drake may fell to the third pick in this draft 
And um, I, I will be the first to admit that I was hesitant about using the third pick in this draft on any one of the, the top three quarterbacks that, that were taken. Um, <clears throat> for, for, you know, what I thought at the time were good reasons. But, I mean, this kid has is, is just shown so much. And I think that, uh, once again, that him sitting the beginning of this season has helped that and being able to watch. I'll give Alex Van Pelt a little credit there and Gerard Mayo a little credit there, even though I think Gerard wanted to go to him earlier. Um, but no, this I, I'm not sure if it's defining, but uh, it, it's it's a good start of a definition. Mm, yeah, I do believe that it is a good start on a definition. And look, bottom line, when you look at Drake May and you look at his capabilities, he showed off on that play what I think everybody believed he could be. You saw the off script ability, scrambling, using his legs. These are the moments that you look at and you say, OK, yeah, this is the Drake May we always wanted. But his ability to be able to deliver and, you know, say what you will. He had time, 11.82 seconds yeah. in a lifetime in right an NFL quarterback's life to be able to get a pass off. But when there's nothing available downfield and nobody's getting open and nothing is there for you to be able to do it for him to be able to hold the ball and scramble and still right. maintain. I a thought level he was down control. at least twice. Yeah. Least I think everybody before did. he got rid of the ball. I yeah. also thought that he was going to take off and run once, <laughs> Yeah, but um, it but looked no. like it. Yeah, what 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 he was able to do there in sidestepping some serious—I uh, don't want to call it serious pressure because they were mm -hmm. only uh, they were only uh, rushing three guys there, but to be able to sidestep, move up, move back, roll around, and finally find Ramondre there is uh, is is just you know uh, a testament to this young man's um, vision. Mm -hmm. you know, in, in the pocket and what he's able to do. And I just, and if you find somebody that can sidestep, walk around, pirouette, mm -hmm. and then still be able sure. to do what he did, I, I'll take that, you know, 10 days out of 10. Absolutely. I think everyone will. And look, bottom line, there were moments where Drake forced the issue yesterday, made yep. passes that we've criticized him about, not necessarily taking the check down or the easy play and trying to push the ball downfield. Yep. You can make the argument he did that on the final throw of the game. But yeah. in this situation, knowing the Patriots needed this score in order to survive, in order to take this game to overtime, Drake yep. did show, I think, a level of temperance, a level of patience. Now, maybe that was because he had no choice. But at the same time, you also look at a rookie quarterback in that situation. And those issues, those times, players can really make head-scratching moves. I think what Drake May did yesterday yeah. shows a level of uh, maturity, and he's going to continue yep. to grow into that. But, Murph, if this team is going to take that next step, they're going to have to improve upon subpar play along both lines offensive and defensive neither side came up big yesterday neither side turned any of the monster keys nope. Murph and i are going to discuss what happened to the patriots lines and why it may be a bigger problem than some are saying all this and more when this episode of the locked on patriots podcast continues a proud part of the locked on podcast network your team every day with Robinhood Gold, you don't need a silver spoon to eat up the financial favors of the 1%. Robinhood Gold allows others to get the rates and perks usually reserved for the high society. Now, the resourceful individual with Robinhood Gold can earn the very liberal rate of 4.5% APY on uninvested cash and be rewarded with a handsome 3% retirement boost on an IRA account. Robinhood Gold provides the privileges of a high net worth for any net worth. These generous benefits are now available for only $5 a month. The new gold standard is here with Robinhood Gold. Sign up at Robinhood.com slash gold. Terms apply. For product-specific disclosures, visit Robinhood.com slash gold. Investing involves risk. Rate may change. Gold membership is offered by Robinhood Gold, LLC. Listen up, Locked On listeners. When it comes to daily fantasy sports, Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action. With over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings, Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on Prize Picks. 
And what I love most about Prize Picks is that it puts its members first. So all withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. When my picks hit, I can get my money in as quick as 15 minutes. And when you sign up today, you get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Make your picks in less than 60 seconds and turn your sports opinions into real money all season long on prize picks. Download the app today and use the code locked on NFL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. That's $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup when downloading the app today and using the code locked on NFL. Prize picks run your game. Patriots fans, thank you once again for joining us here today on Locked on Patriots, making us your first listen each and every day as we continue to break down the Patriots' 20-17 to overtime loss to the Tennessee Titans. And it is a melancholy Monday here on Locked on Patriots, but there are some silver linings. Quarterback Drake May looked like the quarterback we all hope he can be. At times, there were some rookie moments, folks, but we will take away more positives than negatives from the play of Drake May. However, the Patriots' lines around him didn't necessarily rise to the occasion. Drake was under pressure for a good long while on Sunday, and the offensive line is directly to blame for that, but he also didn't get a whole lot of complimentary help from the defensive line and helping yep. to keep Drake off the field and allow that defense to be able to put pressure on a Titans offense. If we're talking turning monster keys, there's only one man who could join us here on Locked On Patriots, and he is joining us despite some camera issues. He's powering through it and still providing top-notch wisdom, counsel, and of course, his lament that his monster keys weren't turned. And I'm talking about my good friend, the legend himself, Thomas Murphy. Murph, we've talked a lot about Drake May, but I think we'd be remiss if we didn't mention that Patriots offensive line surrendered four sacks. Patriots cannot sustain any type of a rhythm in the running game or in the passing game if they're going to get that type of poor protection. Of course, the same argument can be made that the Patriots defense didn't exactly come up big when it was needed most. But before we get into the defensive monster keys not being turned, bud, let's stick with the offensive monster keys. This is an offense right now, Murph, that absolutely needs a solid, cohesive offensive line in order to be able to operate at full strength. We did not see that yesterday. Another combination looking like it failed. Scott Peters, Alex Van Pelt, and Gerard Mayo are now under the microscope when it comes to this line. This was the eighth combination that they used on Sunday Something's got to give here. When you look at the way this line played on Sunday, in conjunction with the monster keys that you laid out very nicely on Friday, what are your takeaways from this line? Because in my opinion, this is a unit that still needs a lot of work. Oh, yeah. A, a ton of work, man. This this goes all the way back to the offseason and, and how uh, um, our illustrious uh, leader, Mr. Wolf, put together this offensive line that, that isn't really here. OK, uh, his his right tackle that he he uh, signed to play left tackle is quit. He's gone. He's not he, out of here, man. I'm I, you know, I'm out of Dodge. All right. His his draft pick is is only his best. His earliest uh, um, draft pick is is on IR and they've been shuffling guys in and out and in and out and putting um Putting Layden Robinson back in at offensive guard and kicking on Wayu back out to right tackle to start this game was ridiculous. I mean, they had, you know, this this line had started to gel a little bit, at least in pass pro, over the past few weeks. Uh, and and to shake things up now, I thought was um, was kind of uh, I don't want to say yeah no I want to say it it, it was stupid. It was stupid. Robinson ended up only playing like 20 snaps on the game before they kicked on way you um, uh, back inside. And, um, you know, Mayo Mayo used it as an excuse that we wanted to get our best player on one of their best players. Well, you knew that coming in. Mm -hmm. I spelled it out for you. All right. Read the keys. Turn them. And um, it, so, yeah, no, I think it was short sighted. I, I think it was downright dumb. To, to mess with a um, an offensive line that was finally showing a bit of promise in at least one area 
of of the field, but they still are unable to run the ball. I thought the play calling was was terrible in smashing stuff up. You know, Brown was getting blown off the ball um, this way. We've been praising him for weeks now in his his great play there at center, but he did not have a good game at all. And um and they were unable to get to the outside. I said, you know, you the outside zone blocking, get to the edge, and they couldn't get it because guys were not there to set those blocks. Especially someone like Simmons who loves to right. turn the corner and loves to be able to get around those edges. And we talked about that as a potential problem. And Trey Jacobs and his uh, inability to keep that to want to keep that edge short rather than right. elongate it. Uh, yeah, the Patriots struggled, and it showed in the stats. Drake May was under pressure on 38.5% of his dropbacks. Right. Obviously, we talk about the four sacks without any question, but this team did not run the ball, like you said. Uh, they're not doing the little things that it takes. The protection did settle down a little bit when they went back to that Jacob right. Owenu type line, uh, but it wasn't great. The run blocking produced negative nine yards before contact for the Patriots running backs yesterday. That yep. cannot happen. You can't get a running game. You can't hang your hat on... I like to use the running game, the outside zone, to develop play action, to get the deep ball down the field, to utilize the intermediate parts of the field, and then all of a sudden say, oh, That's we're it. not able to do that. If you're going to be an outside zone run team or any type of run first team, you got to get better than that. That really, I think, uh, shows a lot of uh, deficiencies. Murph, you're a baseball guy. We all talk about manufacturing runs. You know, right. When you manufacture a run, when there's nothing else there, the good teams are able to do that. We just watched the Los Angeles Dodgers do that and win the World Series. The Patriots now need to do that when it comes to yards. They're not getting enough yards on the ground. They're really not getting enough yards in the passing game either, nope. but at least that's slightly better. They have to start manufacturing yards. And right now, the way this offensive line is playing, it's tough to see a way and a method in which they can do it. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. There's um, there, there's, uh a need here to re-identify yourself, okay? Maybe start using these these running backs out of the backfield, uh, a little more uh, bubble screen action, a little more something, because the, the, you can't run the ball. And you've got to be able to use these, use the, the pass as a run, a la the old West Coast um, 49ers offense back in the days of Craig. You know, mm -hmm. just get him out into a pattern and and allow him to pick up three or four yards, maybe more out of that, because this run game is just not happening. And believe me, folks, it's not because of the talent of one Ramondre Stevenson. Yeah, without any question. I think Ramondre shows that when he has the ability to make a play, whether it's receiving or whether it's running the ball, he's got the capabilities. You need to give him the opportunities and the lanes and the holes to be able to run through. Patriots line just not doing it right now. So maybe it's incumbent upon Gerard Mayo, Alex Van Pelt, Scott Peters to shake this line up a little bit, shuffle the deck, see what's there, and maybe try to salvage whatever they can and maybe even bring in some outside help. We're going to get into that in just a moment, folks. Don't go anywhere because all of this has implications on Tuesday's trade deadline, which is coming up and looming. Murph is going to give his thoughts on that. But Murph, I didn't want to take our leave of this game without talking about the opposite side of the ball because fans may look at the final score if you haven't seen the game and see 20 to 17 and say, okay, well, they've yielded only 20 points. But when you look at the fact that most of the defensive breakdowns that the Patriots had came out of Tennessee using the run or yep. play action, that leads you to a little bit of an uneasy feeling. One key that was turned, it wasn't turned well, but it was turned, was the Patriots did go pretty man coverage heavy yep. on Sunday. 38.9% of their defensive plays came in man coverage. They did pretty well in those shells. They held Rudolph when they needed to, um, but... In my opinion, this team is still struggling on early downs. They were yeah. way too porous on the early downs in order for the Patriots to really make an impact. And it showed. It showed in Tony Pollard being able to get yardage on yep. the ground. It showed when Mason Rudolph needed to step up and make a big throw. He had time to do it, get his receivers down the field. When it comes to blame pie for this one, how much would you put on this defense, specifically that front seven? Um, A, a ton. Maybe, maybe, you know, 60 percent 
All right, I'm going to throw this out at you. Um, seven for 16. All right, that's what the worst third down conversion team in the NFL did to you on Sunday. Mm-hmm. They were they were they were converting on third down um, at at uh, a thirty percent clip if I if I remember, and this mm-hmm. is almost fifty. Yeah. All right, this is this is kissing fifty. You could lean over and kiss fifty percent, and that directly goes to what happens on early downs and how porous this uh this um Patriots defensive line is right now. Um, Jelani Tavai. Had a, had a good game. Christian Ellis did not have a good game at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he was out there for 49, uh, 45 defensive snaps. And Tony Pollard um, just just ate him up. Mm-hmm. You know, he needs to uh, to cover. He needs to be there to stop the run. And and that didn't um, and that didn't happen. Another another guy who had a terrible day was our buddy Keon White. Mm-hmm. All right constantly running up past the play playing out of of uh position not um not being where he's supposed to be i keep saying folks you know don't run up past the quarterback don't get pushed out there don't get pushed off the ball and white got blown off the ball you know right from the opening drive it was terrible he he had an awful game um <clears throat> he got behind mason rudolph and uh, it, when trying to rush and get get to the passer, and it led led to the touchdown in the fourth quarter. Um, yeah, no, I, I'm putting you know most of this loss on the defensive side of the ball, mm-hmm. and that that might be because you know guys are um, are in over their head. They're being asked to play too many snaps and in in, in, in positions that in, in play um, playing those snaps in in situations that they can't really handle we've talked about this in the past and how bill would use a guy for five six maybe even three snaps you know because that situation uh called for it and they bill knew that that was gonna that's not happening with this crew Mm -hmm. and you know sooner the the tape gets out there and other offensive coordinators know that they're gonna uh be able to pick on this guy or pick on that guy but no right down to it i mean it just just circle back to Keon White. It's just stupidity mm-hmm. and playing off script and yeah. freelancing. Yeah. And I mean, in a lot of ways, I mean, you take a look at it and maybe the overtime drive, a 13 play drive that took a good amount of time off of the clock yeah. and put the Patriots in a very precarious situation to be able to score in overtime could be a microcosm. Now I understand that there are breakdowns that are going to happen in an overtime drive because players are tired. It's right. going to be a difficult situation, uh, but two. these things, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know what? You play the That's game harsh. to win, right? Yeah. You play to you, you, win you, the game. You, you play to win the game, but there was no, there was really no downside there. Yeah. Okay. You came back. You were ready to tie the game. Your defense had been on the field for a very long time. I understand that Drake had just run around for a minute and a half, and the offensive line was tired and everything. But from the two, you spread it out. You figure out something. You send the six foot six guy up over the top. Anything. You know. Mm-hmm. You you had a you had a chance to 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 walk out of there with a victory and you, you, you kind of allowed the Titans to dictate it again in overtime with, with that last drive. And, and I just think, you know, at that point in time with the amount, the time of possession, I think that, that, uh, they ended up, we, we talked about, uh, playing, uh, controlling tempo on Friday. Also the, the, um, the Titans had the ball. I don't, have the number up here in front of me um but it was it was almost 10 minutes more than the patriots did in this in this game even if you take out the overtime drive that's still like you know four or five four minutes more time than the patriots had four or five more minutes and and you you can't win that way you should have gone you should have gone for two drops but although the Patriots now sit at two and seven and the playoffs are not even within their purview, there's still a season to be played. And there's still even next year to consider and maybe even the year after that. The trade deadline is an opportunity for teams to upgrade and maybe even put themselves in better position for free agency at the start of 2025. Will the Patriots be active either as sellers or perhaps even as buyers? Yeah, that's right. That narrative was very strong heading into this game. Did the loss on Sunday to the Titans change that? 
Murph and I are going to discuss that in just a moment when we wrap things up right here on the Locked On Patriots podcast, a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On listeners, time is our most precious commodity, so don't waste it scrolling through the same mind-numbing content for hours and hours. How can you spend it wisely to improve yourself? Well, our sponsor, Hillsdale College, is offering more than 40 free, that's right, free online courses, including Constitution 101, the meaning and the history of the U.S. Constitution, Introduction to Free Market Economics, The Great American Story, A Land of Hope, and a brand new documentary style course on Marxism, Socialism, and Communism. And all of Hillsdale's courses are self-paced so that you can start whenever and tune in wherever. Plus, you can go deeper with readings, quizzes, discussions, or just enjoy the lectures. Go right now to hillsdale.edu slash locked on to enroll. There's no cost, and it's easy to get started. Don't delay. Do it today. That's hillsdale.edu slash locked on to register. hillsdale.edu slash locked on. Locked On listeners, get ready to tackle NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Let your New England fandom work for you by visiting FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win with your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Pats fans, thank you once again for joining us here today on Locked on Patriots as we continue to break down the Patriots' 20-17 loss to the Tennessee Titans, dropping them to 2-7 on the 2024 season. And joining me here today to do so, even though you can't see him, you can feel his presence, and I think it's even more intimidating. I think the aura is even stronger here today on Locked on Patriots, and that is my good friend, the legend himself, Thomas Murphy. Murph, we've talked about monster keys being unturned. We've talked about slices of blame pie. We've talked about Drake May's magic, but the rest of the team really still needing to step it up for the Patriots to even sniff respectability. But the Pats are now heading into the trade deadline on Tuesday at 4 p.m., and we've heard a lot about the Patriots' activity, whether they will be active as sellers. Uh, we've heard the names Kendrick Bourne. We've heard the names Devon Godshaw. We've heard even Kyle Duggar over the weekend could be dangled. It seems like every player that's not named Christian Gonzalez or Drake May right. is not nailed down right now. It seems like anything could be on the table. However, we also heard that the Patriots may be looking to upgrade their own team, maybe get an expiring contract or a very cap-heavy contract that the Patriots could absorb to maybe turn that into a player they could sign down the line. When you look at a loss like this, dropping the Patriots to 2-7, and do you believe that this in any way either accelerated their desire to sell off some pieces or perhaps maybe accelerated their ideas and their need to buy some pieces. Did it have any impact on the trade deadline at all? Um, I don't think it did. Uh, I think it should. Um, I think that uh, what Drake has shown over the, you know, not just Sunday, but while he's in here that you need to explore every Avenue that you can to get him um, more help. But right now, I mean, you know, you're looking at where the Patriots need the most help. And, you know, Minnesota's not trading you, Cam Robinson, okay? Uh, Garrett Bowles is not coming in here from Denver. Uh, Ronnie Staley is not coming here from Baltimore. You know, these are all teams that are in it. Uh, I can't see the the Jets making a move with you and sending Mm -hmm. Tyron Smith over here. And this is where the Patriots really need uh, need help, and it's on the offensive line. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, they're – our names floated out there as, as, you know, help at the wide receiver position, T Higgins. What are you going to give up for T Higgins right now? Mm. Okay. What are, what are you going to give up for Keenan Allen? 
good you know uh you know amari cooper is is you know I, I don't think he's signed an extension yet in buffalo but buffalo ain't helping you out you know they're still in it you know uh so could could we go back out and get brandon cooks i'm leaning in real close right now <laughs> 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 you know sure but it's it's the the help that the patriots need is not out there and not available could they be sellers? Sure. But what are you taking away? Right. We keep talking about leadership. Okay. Do you really want to take away some of the leadership that is, that is on this team that, you know, the, the, the guys that, that you are going to be leaning on, you know, Ramondre is, is just, has just been signed to an extension. I don't want to go find another Ramondre Stevenson. And I don't trust Elliot Wolf to be able to do that. Hmm. You know, um, when when it comes to, you know, I, I'm not trading Marty Mapo. I've, I've already hmm. talked about that. You know, Keon White is is somebody that that needs to be, you know. Hugged a little bit, you know, hmm. get, you know, just hmm. coached up a little bit more. Uh, you know, the, I'm not sure that that the moves are there for the Patriots to bring anybody in that's going to help this season. And um, I'm not sure that you want to take away the uh, the leadership that other teams would want. Mm, All exactly. right. Exactly. Exactly. So well said. And I'll give you an example. There was a rumor that was very heavily circulating pregame yesterday uh, mm -hmm. that really started to make traction around social media. And those of us in the know, like yourself, Murph, myself, we heard the chatter all really weekend long. Yep. That Jonathan Jones may be on the trading block. Right. After the Come game, on. we started to hear a lot. And I can tell you, folks, from those that I've spoken to close to the organization, that this is right on the money, that it would have to be an overwhelming offer in order for the Patriots to trade Jonathan Jones. Right. And I say this with every bit of reverence to John, who I love both as a person and as a player on the field. That's for Jonathan Jones. You know, that's not Drake May. That's not Christian Gonzalez. Right. That's not a cornerstone superstar that you're going to be building around for the next 10 seasons, hopefully. So when you're in New England and you hear that and you hear that they're hesitant to trade him because of the leadership value and the locker room presence he provides, that to me is the exact example as to why you do not want to start trading away valuable locker room guys, valuable leaders on this team in order to bring back a unproven commodity, a draft pick that you may use to package and move up, or a draft pick that you may not be able to use this season or next season. I'm right. in agreement with you, Murph. I don't think this should move the needle. I don't think the Patriots will be buyers. I don't think there's a team out there that's eager to help them at this point no. uh, in the pieces that they need. And I also don't believe it accelerates uh, the need for them to sell. They'll right. sell a piece if they feel it's in their best interest. And you know what? Over the course of the next 24 to 48 hours, Murph, all of our questions will be answered. All of our right. problems will be solved. It's going to be interesting. And all of the moves that the Patriots make, good, bad, or indifferent, and even if they don't make a move, folks, they're still making a choice there. We're going to cover it right here on the Locked On Patriots podcast. So keep it right here. Subscribe, download, follow. You're not going to want to miss a single second of the action as we continue to break down the Patriots' 20-17 to 17 loss to the Titans and all of the activity they'll be making during trade deadline day. But in the meantime... I would be remiss if I did not thank my good friend, the Count of Murphy Fisto himself, who even though the cameras were not on, still was able to steal the show here on Locked On Patriots, as he always does whenever he joins me on the microphone. Thank you so much for joining me today, Murph. I really do appreciate that. An extra tip of the cap for all of your service to Locked On Patriots. And thank you for knocking it out of the park each and every oh, time you join me. Man. Before I let you go, please let everyone know where they can interact with you, where they can absorb all of your great work, and what you got marinating in Murph's Kitchen this week. Well, you got, um, of course, you can follow me on Zitter at TMurph207. Uh, you can uh, read everything that I've got going on over there at DieHardBostonSportsFans.com. And I appreciate each and every second of contribution that you provide to the show, my friend. But most importantly, we appreciate all of you, each and every one of you everydayers that make Locked On Patriots a daily part of your New England Patriots coverage. On behalf of my good friend, Thomas Murphy, the legend himself and the Connor Murphy Fisto, I'm Mike DeBate, reminding all of you to stay safe, stay well, be the change you wish to see in the world. 
Have a great day, everyone, and we'll see you back here again on Trade Deadline Day on Locked on 